Hello everybody, welcome to Bud Labs. I am Budrich and in this video we will talk about different things. First, let's start where we left off. In the last video uh, I showed you how to set a, a cookie for Reddit so, so that we didn't have to use the new uh, design and, and we didn't need to uh, use any extra extensions or JavaScript or anything. All we needed to do was set this cookie. Uh, Emanuele here shows how to set this cookie from uh, the con console. Um, so if you do Control Shift I in Chrome at least, um, then you can find the console tab here. It's uh, usually one of the first tabs here. Uh, and then you can actually just paste this uh, command here and add uh, cookies this way instead of uh, point and click. Uh, in the weird menus that constantly change because the console will always be the console, hopefully. Uh, whatever. Uh, thank you, Emanuele, for that. Uh, that's great. I will add that to the my Vivaldi Rising repository. But remember, I found this uh, custom Reddit uh, cookie thing on a blog, which I in turn found uh, from a GitHub user who had created this uh, Herbie. Uh, let's see where it is now. I know I have it open in one of these tabs. Well, here we have it. Yeah, this is his blog, you know. Dudik's blog. Uh, and Dudik uh, have also created this Herbie demonless notification thing. And in the last video, I told you that it would be nice to add uh, command line options to this. And I have actually went ahead here, uh, forked this repository and made a, a fork that support command line options. So I got all of that working here. I will see if um, he, he will, uh, if he will uh, accept this pull request because, uh, you know, these, these are apparently suckless people here because I got a comment from Pluskis who, who told me that he had seen um, this Herbie program posted on suckless reddit uh, which I didn't know was a thing but apparently it is you know uh, of course everyone and everything got a subreddit so on the suckless subreddit this was posted and um, Apparently, du uh, Dudik here is a suckless guy. And he wants to keep everything suckless, you know, so uh, the features being command line options might be too much for the suckless community. They instead want really small, barely functional programs and then everyone uh, and their mother and grandmother makes uh, uh, their own forks and patch, uh, patches and stuff that only works with certain versions and things like that. They like, like it that way. I, I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, whatever. We see what happens here. If it doesn't get accepted, I think I will um, make my own fork of this instead and create a, my own thing. And I, I, I don't even want to... In that case, I will not call it Herbie either. Uh, I will, of course, honor Herbie uh, and uh, uh, credit Dudik and everything, but I will make my own thing out of this instead because there are more features than command line options that I would like to add now. Uh, so I can completely replace uh, Dunst when I uh, need to. And one, one uh, feature that I want to add is, you know, Dunstify. It have this R, one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll say hello. That just prints a notification here saying hello. But we can also do this when you have this R option, it means replace. So it will replace any notification that have this ID. If no notification exists with this ID, it will create a notification with that ID. And that is what happened here. First, it created a new notification with this ID. And when I executed this one, it replaced the old notification. And you know, what that means is that you can create almost uh, animation like notifications uh, by printing the text into the same uh, notification or box or whatever that's something that i would like uh, that's a feature i would like in in this uh, uh, herbie thing as well another thing uh, is that uh, yeah i think i have herbie the, the source code open here uh, so we can test this but just execute herbie hello here you will see how it looks like now uh, because I, I don't think I have the correct font installed here. 
But now with my patch here, we can uh, set the font to, for example, fixed, fixed, sys, and there I get my favorite font, fixed sys instead. Uh, and other command line options work work as well. For example, background color here, so we can change background color to magenta if we would like to. But maybe most importantly, uh, the thing that I never could do with with uh, 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 dumps is that we can set the position here. So if, if I set x1, you'll see then it will spawn itself one pixel from the right edge of the screen. Uh, and that might be a bit weird, you know, but that is because the default uh, anchor position for the notifications are the top right corner. But you can also change now the anchor here to the top left corner, which I call 1, and then uh, x1 uh, here, you know. No big deal. But that's, or it is actually a big deal to be able to change the position from the command line like, like this. But one thing you notice when I execute this are that the terminal here, it is, uh, um, Herbie occupies the shell, so to speak, or, or it doesn't fork itself into the background. Uh, like, uh, you can't really say that Dunstify does that either, you know, because Dunstify just sends a, a, a command to the uh, Dunst daemon. Um, but Dunstify actually have this uh, B option, so it behaves uh, the same. And when I close the notification, I get my terminal or shell back. And this is uh, something that I use not often, but it can be useful sometimes. Uh, and it's a feature I would like also in Herbie, meaning the default behavior of Herbie, in my opinion, should be that it should fork itself into the background, just create the notification. And then you could also create uh, multiple notifications and stuff like that. But that also would mean that I would need to keep track of the notifications somehow, but I feel it's something I would uh, like to keep trying to, to implement, but it's really it feels weird, you know, contributing to a small little thing like this. And this is, uh, Dudik seems to be really happy with, with how things are. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's a suckless guy. <laughs> and th nothing wrong with that, you know, if, if this is... Um, uh, and in one way, it's really nice because uh, I'm not, not a C programmer in any way, but this is just uh, 200 lines of C. It's a whole program. It's very, very easy to get in. Uh, a, a good little project to start working on you know you you got the text you got the it, it it's like a like a usable hello world <laughs> program that that you can actually use for stuff you know and then build on 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 top of that i, I i've been looking for for a program like this to to have have like a base uh, to build uh, other c applications around you know and this is perfect for that so in one way, maybe it's better to, to not implement any command line options and stuff like that, because the way I implement these command line options is uh, I link or I include this library, OptParse, which is a third-party library uh, that enables uh, long and short option support. I found this because I read this blog post a couple of weeks ago by uh, Chris uh, Wellons, this blog is called Null Program. Highly recommend this blog. It, there are lots of great articles here. Uh, but this one about conventions for command line options, it's it's like a very general uh, uh, article. Um, and uh, both Chris and I are of the opinion that as many programs as possible should honor all of the conventions for command line options. Uh, but most programs doesn't because everyone is like, oh, I don't want to use a library. I, I I can implement my own command line parser, and and then it doesn't work with all the weird edge cases that that uh, the the conventions actually have. So, and Chris uh, Wellens he he even points out that the uh, get dot library that's included in the st C standard li library, even that doesn't follow all the conventions. So he wrote his own. Uh, minimal uh, uh, library here called optparse and that is what I've been using here, his library. It's also available for Go because Go also seems to have a really weird way of parsing options. 
Uh, but you say that most of them are acceptable, except for Python seems to have a really terrible way of, of dealing with the command line options, but whatever. Great article, I will uh, link it in, in the show notes, uh, highly recommend everyone reading this, because I, both me and Chris seems to be fans of uh, command line options. Kind of lost my track there, but... Um, this library, even if it is very minimal, actually, it is still uh, three times as long as, as uh, the actual Herbie program, you know. Uh, but if you're gonna think like that, it gets weird, okay, but how many lines is it in xlib h, you know, in xft h and standard io h? There are lines in these libraries as well, you know. So, whatever. And here, the implementation here, uh, right now, I, maybe this could be written much smarter. I, I am very much a beginner uh, in C, but I added a, a function here, here called parse command line, with just a switch case uh, thing. And then I define the actual uh, available options like this. And I, I really like this syntax, long option, short option, and type of option. That optparse required means that all of these options uh, require an argument. Uh, and then they will override the settings here. And that also meant that I changed these, uh, these settings. They were uh, constants. It looks look like this. I just removed that const, uh, const thing here and then everything worked. Otherwise it didn't compile actually. Uh, yeah, but whatever. I, I think I want to keep on working on this, and, and we'll see what happens. If maybe maybe Dudik think um, these IDs are are good, and he will implement them. Maybe he doesn't, and then I will create my own uh, daemonless notification thing. Because one thing I want to do with it is, um, I also found that here in in Plusky's uh, comment. Because Plaskis, he thought that he would use this uh, uh, Herbie together with Tiramisu uh, as uh, a notification daemon and, and create his own version of, yeah, for example, Dunst. Uh, and I, I hadn't really uh, heard about Tiramisu, but found that as well, as you could see there, we, uh, we had it open. Uh, there it is. Tiramisu is, um, it is also like Dunst but without the notifications. So this, this actually hooks up to uh, dbus and listens for uh, actual notifications, like notify send commands. Not the Herbie command wouldn't trigger this, but notify send would trigger uh, Tiramisu. But Tiramisu doesn't print a notification. All it does is uh, print, the, uh, or it prints the, the notification uh, information to standard out. That means you can create your own program that handles that information in turn, which could uh, trigger Herbie to spawn a normal notification. But you could also do something like this uh, project here, that they link here, uh, poly notifications, which uses polybar to display notifications. And that means that every time you do notify send, or if a different another project uh, program would use notify send, or not not notify send but live notify and send a notification the notification would, would get shown in polybar and that's uh, that's something that i think is really cool and i remember when i started uh, early on in my rising linux rising career so to speak i actually had my dance set up to be uh, uh, overlaying my my top bar like this because i think not notifications in the status bar that's the most uh, space efficient location for notifications but the problem is of course when you get like multi-line notifications how should you display those should you scroll the text then or something it, it, it gets a bit weird but i'm thinking that with herbie with my uh, uh, um, mod modifications to it but uh, probably as it is now also would work uh, and this tiramisu uh, uh, application then you could use uh, both uh, herbie to, to display some notifications maybe multi-line notifications or specific notifications that you want to display like that and some could be displayed in polybar 
but I think even better, the best of all worlds, you know, would be to have something like on uh, Windows, Microsoft Windows notifications. Then you just have an icon and every time you get a notification, you get like a badge, badge uh, like we have here. We can see I have two, yeah, I know it's very hard to see, but it's a, a badge here with a number two on, on stylus here because there are two active style sheets. Um, so every time you get a notification, we could have a badge uh, getting with a number or something like that. When you click that icon, then it could display the notifications as uh, uh, Herbie boxes. I don't know, that, uh, this is a thing, I, I, I got it all in my, my head here and I really want to, to experiment with it and see how it turns out. But I, I think it can be uh, really neat actually. Uh, but first and foremost, I think I will work here on, on trying to get my my uh, 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 features into this Herbie thing or whatever I will call it if I will uh, make a hard fork or whatever uh, that that is called, you know. Okay, um, added an image here to i3s dev, making it friendlier and friendlier every day. Uh, I think I also finished the documentation here. I've cleaned up the repos and, and stuff. So, so what what you can read in this README is more or less uh, valid and how things will be uh, and actually how things are. So, yeah, uh, this is all coming together. Uh, feels great. I wish you a great day. Thank you for watching. Bye.